man ought to serve him. Not only that, we are to appreciate our God. According to what is happening around us, we have to be ready to meet the Lord. A lot of people are not ready. But the Lord wants us. Okay, quiet in the sanctuary. The Lord wants us to be ready. Church, are we ready? Are we ready to serve God? Yes. Amen. We have, the Lord has given us the entire week. When we come here in the morning, we've got to respect the sanctuary of God. And ready to serve God. Praise God. When you hear what happened in Israel and every part of the world, we better be ready because the time is at hand. When, when we hear what happened in America, right here in America, and around the world in the Caribbean, we better be ready because uh, the news that is going on right now is not good news. It's bad news all over. In fact, the enemy trying to take over. And we as believers, <laughs> we got to be ready that those things will happen. Because the enemy is so bold-faced these days. And when we listen to it, like many of the problems coming straight from America and spreading around the world, we have to pray. We have to pray. But the Lord God, the God we serve, will put down one and take up the other if we do be careful. We've got to be ready to serve God. I'm not here to speak politics, but I'm here to speak the word of what is happening around us. It is not good. Be honest, I got some things, uh, some news I got just yesterday and grieved my heart of certain things that happening. And it seems like many of it is coming out from right here. Right here. Okay, so. This morning, we're going back into uh, the book of John. We are still in chapter 14. And this morning, we'll be going into verse 15 of chapter 14. Verse 15 of chapter 14. Clyde, do you have a Bible? You didn't bring a Bible, right? You've got to be able to bring a Bible. Do you want one? Can you see clearly in a, in a Bible? Huh? Huh? Well, without, okay, because your print is bigger. That's why you have the print that you have, but you're not using it. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for taking care of us for the week and more. Bring us here one more time, oh God. We thank you for everything. We thank you for life, Lord, even uh, the temporal life and uh, the abundant life and also the eternal life. You said, you said Lord, you will give us a life and that you could live abundantly, which is a long life. But you also tell us about eternal life. We that believe. We have accepted Lord and Savior. You also have given us that eternal life. We will live forever. So, Father, I have you with this morning. And, Lord, everyone that are on my voice this morning, help them to really take in your word and get serious concerning you. We know, Lord, that the time is at hand. And we've got to be ready. Speak for me and for me this morning. And everyone that are on my voice, help them to listen. And to listen well. And that we would turn around, Father, and be better people for you. 
So bless your service this morning, we that are here and the rest to come. Take full control. Lord, I pray for the ecclesia, oh God. Have your way today. As I ask call in Jesus' name and for thy sake. Amen. And amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Now we are stepping into verse 15 of chapter 14 of John. <clears throat> I've studied a few verses, probably down to verse 19. But I'm not sure if we're going to get right there. or called, all depends to uh, our respond. We might get there. Verse 19, and we might not get there. But we will go according to the way the Lord wants us to do it. Okay, uh, the reading is on the border. As he said, if ye love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. That's verse 15. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. That he may abide with you forever. We have a few verses this morning to read. We will not do too fast. We will take our time. We will try to understand what Jesus was saying to us. Or what he said to us this morning, and what he said to his disciples. Now, if you did follow up or study the, the lesson, you'll see a lot of things probably he had not seen that long ago, or certain things that he had not come across before. But it is right here in the word the things that we need to know, even the things that we sometimes argue about or have doubts about. It's right here in the Word. So this morning we can give comments, speak about it, and move on and appreciate the God that we serve. But the Lord, as it said in verse 15, if you love me, Keep my commandments <clears throat> or keep my precepts, keep my word, keep my order. If you love me, keep my commandments and I will uh, pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Now, uh, now uh, he said, even, verse 17, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Let's stop here a little while and probably someone can tell us what Jesus was really saying to the disciples. What he was really telling us, Clyde, where are you going? He went to the, uh, put something in the trash. Oh, okay. What the Lord was really saying, or what is he really saying to us even today according to the word? The three verses. I want somebody to explain those three verses. What I read.
Testing one, two. Testing one, two. There you go. Okay. Okay. You want to explain what? 15 and 16 and 17? 15, 16, and 17. Okay, 15, uh, what is 15 saying? 15, 16, and 17. Speak my, keep my commandments. In other words, if you believe in, if you believe in God and, and you love him, you'll keep his commandments. You'll do what he asks you to do. Or you'll, yeah, you'll do the things that he wants you to do. Uh, number uh, 16. I guess he'll send you a comforter, uh, someone that's going to be there with you at all times. Uh, you abide in him and you, the comfort it will buy will abide in you, and it will help you uh, through the times that you're going through, or it'll help you understand some of the things you're going through. Uh, that's my uh, interpretation of what mm -hmm. those two uh, verses are saying. Um, yeah, okay. uh, I thought it was interesting that the Holy Spirit is going to be with us forever. We can't see the comforter right now, but he's with us, um, with us. And Jesus said, we'll be in us. Uh, but I just, I think recently it just became Rhema that he, the comforter that Jesus assigned to us, will be with us forever. So in eternity, he's still going to be teaching us and helping us and guiding us um, which I thought was really interesting. Um, and like uh, David said, Jesus doesn't want lip service of just, oh, I love you. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Like, show me. Do what I'm telling you to do. And then verse 17 says, um, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Well, we can't see him, and he speaks in that still, small voice, but we've seen, we have all seen the results of him in our life. Like, for instance, driving, sometimes the light turns green, and he just holds me back in a peaceful way. It's like, uh-uh, don't pull out yet. And then you see a car fly through a red light. And then he goes, okay, now you can go. You know, or just different things like that. Um, um, where he's protected us and guided us. And, or, or you wake up in the middle of the night and he's explaining to you a scripture that you may have read or um, was pondering on or a question you had. So... He's, comforter is such a beautiful word. He really is a comforter, you know, or I don't know if you've experienced where you crying. I've experienced crying because something happened and I'm hurt. And then after I finish crying, I'll hear something in my spirit that makes me laugh, you know, where it's like he just changes the whole from pain to joy. Like, oh, it's not that bad. And, 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 and I, I'm thankful that Jesus left us the comforter, the Holy Spirit with us, each and every one of us. Okay. Also, That's it's like you being somewhere and you're not really supposed to be there, but you're there. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, something comes to you. He comes to you and he tells you, hey, you're not supposed to be here. And you're looking around and saying, well, well uh, uh, yeah, you're not supposed to be here. You take your stuff and get your people and get on out of here. This is not for you. So uh, that's happened to me several times where I've been in places and he's told me, hey, you're not supposed to be here. This is not your, this is not your set. This is not who you run with. You need to get out of here because if you don't, something's going to happen. So... That's happened to me more than once, so he's real, for sure. He's definitely for real.
Okay. He said the spirit. Ah. Good morning. As I look at verse 17, he said, that is the spirit of, the spirit of truth. Yes. That is the spirit of truth. Or the spirit, the spirit of truth. Not a lying spirit, but the spirit of truth. Right. Because you know that, that there are many lying spirits, right? Right. But he said, the spirit of truth. My Father shall give you. The world cannot receive him. That's the last part of it. The world cannot receive him. Neither knoweth him, but he know him. Yeah. For he dwelleth with you, with you, and shall be yeah. in you. Now, according to what we read there, now we can put one on one together and know what Jesus is really saying. What do you think? Uh, uh, you're saying something, right? Um, I was just going to say how it says the world cannot receive him because it neither seeth him not, neither knoweth him. And I, 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 I'm thinking of this one situation in my life where I sat my daughter when she was little, she was crawling, crawling, a baby crawling. And I sat her by the kitchen door thinking, I'm going to be a good mom while I do dishes. I'm going to keep my eye on my baby. And not even 30 seconds later, I heard, Bzzz. and when I heard that, I looked around and she wasn't there. And so there was a tablecloth on the table, and I was scared to look under the table because I thought she would be dead. I knew the sound I heard was electricity. So I lifted up the, I lifted up the tablecloth, and when I looked, she was sitting there, and there were keys stuck in the socket, the electrical socket. I know that that was the grace of God, the Holy Spirit that kept her alive, and Instead of me panicking, I grabbed her, of course, but the Holy Spirit told me, go get a broom now and knock the keys out of the socket. But to this day, I know it's Jesus who takes care of my kids yes. because I w was trying to do my best. And I heard that in just a split second, I heard, Bzz. and if it wasn't for the grace of God, she wouldn't have been alive. Yes. So I thank him for his Holy Spirit that keeps the wicked one. I knew it was the Holy Spirit. You know, the world would have said, oh, that's just a coincidence or I'm lucky. But I knew it was the Holy Spirit and it was God. And I like to hold on to those miracles that he's done in my life. Oh, yes. Uh, something I saw in the latter part of it. He shall, he is with you. He is with you mm -hmm. and shall be in you. So we observe a present and a future right there. Not true? Yeah. A present mm -hmm. and a future yeah. right in that lesson. He said, he is with you and shall be in you. If we put one and one together, what is what Jesus was really saying there? Who we, who he, he was referring to. Who he, he is with you and shall be in you. The Holy, the Holy Spirit. Right. Okay. okay, the Holy Spirit. In Old Testament times, the Holy Spirit was alive. But in today's, since Pentecost, the Holy Spirit dwells in us permanently. Okay. Every believer. But, uh, yeah, that's right. But right here, in 17 again, 
Who would we say is the Holy Spirit? According to Jesus' word, the way he spoke. What do you think he was really saying? Hmm? Third person of the Trinity. Hmm? The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. The first he, person. The, the third. The third person. Now, can the third person be the second person or even the first person? Huh? Yeah, I'd say yes. I would say yes. Now, according to what we read there, who was the Holy Spirit right there? The way Jesus spoke. I'm not understanding. I'm not understanding what you're saying. Who, who, who actually was the Holy Spirit? What are you saying there? Well, it's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But Jesus called him the comforter right here. And he said he's not going to speak on his own authority, which means he has the authority to speak on his own. <laughs> That's right. But he's not. Jesus said he's going to bring to remembrance everything I said. So just like when Jesus came, Jesus said he's only saying what the Father is saying. And then Jesus said, now the Holy Spirit is only going to say to you what I'm saying. Okay. He's not going to speak on his own authority. Okay, let's move down to verse 18. Oh, can I say one more thing about that? Yeah, go one? ahead. Uh, just that the Holy Spirit, he said he'll be with you. He is with you because he was with the disciples, like she said, until Pentecost when he indwelled. But I believe even... Um, the, Jesus said, we didn't choose him, he chose us. And I can look back over my life and see where God, the Holy Spirit, prevented things from happening. He was with me until I got saved. He yeah. stopped things from happening in my life that could have taken me out, killed me, preserved. He preserved me until I got saved. Then he came inside of me. Okay. Now, i not sure if everybody sees what I see. Yes, Mr. Graham. Go ahead. Let me hear what you see. No, go ahead. <laughs> if I say what I see, you will just see what I see. Okay, go ahead. Speak to the ground. <laughs> well, before we know Jesus, the Holy Spirit was not abiding in us. Sometimes things happen to us. It is because, you know, it is not our time. Because each one of us have our length of days upon the earth. And maybe whatever happened to us didn't take us out because it was not our time. But when we come, and we always attribute the praise to God because we escape, which is a very good thing to do. But when, when we became children of God, the Holy Ghost is the person that convicted us of our sins and tell us that we need Christ in our lives. And through that, we <sighs> repent and we became um, children of the of the Most High God. So the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, as he's called, he abides with us forever because he indwells us. He encourages us. He strengthens us. He does all his work. All, all his work he does in our lives. Okay. Now I asked that question uh, before. And I'm asking the question again. Who was the Holy Spirit there? Read verse 18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. 
I will come to you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. What was he saying? I will come to you. To me, to me, what he's saying is that the Comforter will come to you in, a, in, in your time of need. It may not be exactly when you need it, but he's there. He will come to you and give you exactly what you need. If you need to be comforted or if you need to be persuaded or if you need to be turned around, he will come, he will come to you and give you exactly what you need. Okay, well, as we look at verse 18. Yeah, what you saw? Yes, Brother Craig. I had, prom I had promised myself I wasn't going to say anything anymore, but I have to enter here. He's saying that my Father and I are one. The Holy Spirit and I are one. So I will come to you through the Holy Spirit. It's just an extension of his own self. Um, and the Father, all three are one person. So it's just a different part of him. Also, as to the history with us and Christ, he said, when you were in the womb, I knew you. He already knows who he's going to save before the foundation of the world. So it's not hard to imagine that he would protect you until you could receive him. You did not choose me, but I chose you. But he chose us before the foundation of the world. So he already um, knows who he's going to save. So when he's saying, I will come to you, He's coming to us in the form of the Holy Spirit. But he is saying that God is a spirit. So all three elements, even he, at that point, is a spirit. And they will come to us. My Father will come to you, and we will dwell in you, and you and me, and so on and so forth. In that one place in John where he's saying, Father, thank you that I'll be in them and they shall be in me and me and you shall be in them and we will be in them and I will be in you and so on and so forth. He's showing that we all become one flesh. So Christ is um, married to the church and they become one flesh. But if Christ is married to the church, then the Father is married to the church and the Holy Spirit is married to the church. Anybody see that way? Anybody see what Brother Craig saw? Probably that's what I saw. Right? That's verse 18. In fact, he said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will not leave you fatherless. I will not leave you as an orphan. As one, we know. What is an orphan? Definitely. An orphan is one parents is dead. Or fatherless or motherless. He said, I'm not going to leave you that way. But I will come to you. He used the word I, which is a noun. The first person. When he said, when he, would, when he used the word, I will send him, which is like the second person or a pronoun in the, the sentence, right? When he said, I presently, I, Jesus, will come to you. In the form of the Holy Spirit, even as the brother Craig said. So Jesus was simply saying, you see me now in the flesh. But I will come back in the spirit. But the way he spoke in order for people to understand, he said, I will, my father, because the Lord, that's the way it's set up. And that's the way he had to speak. 
because he was not only speaking or he would not speak of himself because God gave him an order and the God is himself but as we said the Father, Son and Holy Spirit which is the Trinity some people say there is no Trinity but Father, Son and Holy Spirit that's the word for it Trinity which means three but it's one person but it's one God if I say one God but three person in one yes he said uh, I will not leave you comfortless I will come to you I will not leave you as an orphan or as a fatherless I will come to you that was the question when I set it up was to ask and he said which is this 19 the last verse he said yet a little while and the world seeth me no more but ye see me because I live, ye shall live also. Yes, but, oh, but yes, Brother Craig, sorry. No, it's okay. Um, also, Jesus is fulfilling an Old Testament prophecy here, and I don't think it's emphasized enough in modern Christianity, but in the Old Testament, God says, my spirit shall not always chide with man or be away from man because of the original sin of Adam. So God, in the original, I believe, I believe, this personal belief, I'm not basing this on any scripture, but I believe the Holy Spirit was indwelling Adam and Eve at that time when they committed sin, but that's just my own belief. But the point is that God in the Old Testament said that, you know, my spirit shall not always fight with man or that, you know, I'm going to join this back together at some point. Okay. Okay. He said, the Holy Spirit shall not always strive with men. He said it in the Old Testament, actually. Because uh, as we said, and earlier said that uh, when the Holy Spirit was grieved, they would leave. He would leave in the Old Testament because he was not in there in man. He was with man but not in man. Is that Jesus was with his disciples but not in them. But actually he was pointing to his death which would be Pentecost when the time come when he go back to his father and everything is fulfilled, then he would be in man. Because that was the mission he left heaven for. To come back, to come to bring back man to the Father, even as Brother Creek said. When man fell or Adam fell, he messed it up. And God had to move away from man because of disobedient because actually it's like Adam took the enemy above God because he believed or if I would say took but he believed if I say I think that's what I just mean he believed the serpent or the devil above God because God told him do not eat from that fruit for the day that you eat that fruit, you will surely die. The serpent came after and tell Eve, you will not die. But your eyes will open and you will be like him. 
But we know that Craig, Brother Craig, always, the women always cause the problem. <laughs> we, we, but actually, we always fall for it. Because of love, we always fall for it. And that's the dead truth. That's the dead truth. But even when I was studying, when God creates man, he created woman partly the same time or the same time. Because he created the woman inside of the man. When I study it, he created the woman inside of the man. That's why he was able to put that man to sleep and take out the woman from him. That's studying, brethren. Have you seen it that way? He took out the woman from man when he felt that man was lonely. But God, which know everything, God know everything. When he created man, he created the woman inside of the man. That's why he was able to take out that rib from that man when he put him to sleep. Have you heard it like that before? That's the way it is. Sister Graham, I have something to say. I hope you're not going to contradict what I said. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, when the scripture says that um, that my spirit shall not always strive with men, there are two. To me, there are two interpretations to that. Um, the first one is man sinned. Man, yeah. man sinned, and because of that, they are doomed to death. Yeah. The, the, other, the other one is that the Holy Spirit of God will, uh, how should I say it? I'm trying to find a good way to say it. Um, striving, um, I'm trying to find another way to say it. But it also de deals with, with judgment on people, oh. those who are outside of the, the, um, the, the law of God. Uh, the word strive mean, would mean wrestling, wrestling or arguing or... Yeah, I think the word strive here. The Holy Spirit will not, he said, I will not always strive with men or, or, or have debate with men or have argument with men or live with men. But, uh, but we complete, he completed it. He said, yet a little while, that's verse, verse 19, yet a little while, and the world seeth me not, or seeth me no more. But you see me, because I live, ye shall live also. That's the last verse. Yes, Clyde. That time Adam ate the Eve, he ate the apple. Huh? That time Adam ate the apple, disobeyed God. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, he disobeyed God because that's when he, God said, do not eat it. And he ate it. And that's where disobedience came. But the last verse, as we, 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 we look at it, he said, he said, a little while the world will not see me. But ye see me because I live, ye shall live also. And that goes to the, the believer, not the world. That's to us because of we, he's in us. We see him. Okay, we, that's a, we complete verse 19. Or probably next week we could comment a little more on verse 19 of chapter 14. Let's pick up you.
offering and then I'll close in prayer.